So in this video, I uh, continue modeling. In fact, I uh, right after the last video, I realized my uh, the, the way I designed the, uh, the different arcs uh, was not going to be seamless or easy to uh, to uh, modify in the future. So I, I realized how to uh, to uh, uh, design it better. Uh, but uh, that's the uh, the point I was making in the first video. Uh, sometimes you you ask the first question in Google, you don't get the answer, but it makes you think enough and give, gives you enough new information that um, you know you get you get inspired or you 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 find solutions after that. So um, so that's one of those moments. Really quickly, I changed uh, the way it was designed, so it's going to allow me to really play with the different profiles easily. And, um, and and see if I can, uh, you know, see differences in the different profiles and how it's balanced. The other thing I did is I re-imported the, the new model, which is the same. Uh, it's exactly the same drawing, but um, I re-imported uh, the, the new model in Unity and then positioned the pivot points. Uh, so each arc has its own uh, center point uh, and I want to be able to use those if I need to position the blade uh, programmatically in Unity. So really force, a bl force the blade into a position before I release it to the physics engine or, or to uh, the rest of the simulation. So kind of if I want to put the blade at 45 degrees right on, on the, the toes, um, usually on the ice, it's not going to be possible, but then I could, you know, if I want, I can do it and I can do it precisely. So, and from there, the weight shifts and, and the, uh, the effect it has on the upper segments um, is going to be interesting to, to see. But I needed those points in order to, uh, to uh, position, to be able to position the blade properly on, on the ice. Um, and the last part of it is, uh, uh, is, um, uh, start and that's where the fun begins. It's really uh, I'm using uh, weights and weight shifts. So the physics engine allows me to um, uh, connect uh, pieces of uh, in those cases it's segments or arms uh, connected by joints and, and hinges and, and control the forces and 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 so I can actually simulate uh, weight shifts. And uh, in this uh, in this video I just do a rotation and uh, see how the blade moves under that weight shift and how it's how much harder it gets for the player to um, to control the blade position under his his foot since um, the skate is sliding all over the place well you know front to back it's not going to stop unless um, there's a little bit of friction but it's really not much so it, it usually keeps gliding um, and so you have to keep actively keep the body has to actively keep the the foot under uh, under the under the body. Let's say um, so. This is what uh, I start to to uh, to kind of play around with uh, towards the end of the video. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, put some uh, markers in the description so that uh, you can jump to the timeline uh, through the timeline and, and get right to the that part. Um, no promise. So enjoy and um, uh, keep exploring and have fun. I took a jump forward a little bit um, and uh, set up a physics. Um, rigid bodies and mesh colliders and whatnot. But um, basically what I did is I... I uh, build a hinge and, and with a, an arm that rotates around uh, I can move the axis around here where it's going to be higher or lower um, once it's started it's it's not going to go anywhere but uh, no I can I can make this hinge go a little bit higher so oops this is too much right over here um, and and kind of check the uh, the effect of you know the weight shift um, I can also change the, the mass so having a little bit more more weight it's 
can affect how much force it needs to go up and, and how much downward swing it has when it goes down. There's no resistance at all, so no drag, no friction. I took all that out uh, and it's it's still kind of neat. Now it's, it's kind of heavy, uh, so there's no friction on the ice either, so, you know it's pretty cool to see how how the body is actually working to keep that foot down uh, this is just one axis and there's nothing on top of it just the the weight of that rotating arm and you can see the blade uh, how much it has to shift and well it does so like that's how you it, it, it's not moving all that much but if you think that you have three more segments on top of that and that have to stay balanced to keep your your head up and and that's even before you apply force uh with your upper body to take a shot or to to rotate or to take a hit then then it's pretty amazing the human body is pretty amazing so um so anyway uh what i want to do now is um is probably get you know start with uh, an angle and and go with with a little bit of uh so go like this maybe the rotating arm is going to be a little bit smaller uh so i'm going to make this smaller and i'm going to take it up a little bit higher and probably make it a, a different color so let's do your materials and just basic color create <clears throat> um shader um material so rotating arm Let's make that a nice uh, blue and apply that to this guy here. Maybe not this guy. Maybe this guy here. There we go. So it looks like 2D, but it's actually uh, 3D with hinges so that when we introduce rotation, it's going to be. So I locked the rotation uh, so it doesn't go uh, left and right and it doesn't rotate either. Um, so it only can go uh, forward and back. Um, and now what I want to see is, so the effect that this has on, let's, let's get a little bit more weight. So we have, we have movement. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take that cube here and uh, kind of push it into. So let's do it like this and push it into. Well, I can make it. It's pretty cool. Uh, so any variations of this, of the weight on the blade is going to have that little ripple effect uh, that the player has to, to, uh, to deal with and to stabilize. So it really doesn't matter what. So yeah, now uh, let's, let's rotate on the other side and kind of see that, uh, see that in action. So Let's do a minus 40, minus 82. So this just the speed of the rotation. So I'm kind of just simulating. Um, uh, when you're not balanced, when when there there is a variation of 
when there are variations in your in your balance, what you have to deal, what the player has to deal with. Um, so let's let's do this. Let's make that rotation uh, quite a bit. So let's take the weight down of that rotating arm, and then let's take the rotation velocity quite a quite a bit higher. Let's see how it. Oh, it deals with that or what the effect is. So it should be faster. So it's a little bit the same thing when where there's it's wobbly, but let's do this like this. Yeah. Oops joys of of uh, physics engine it's not always working like you you'd expect so all right so somebody who has unstable hips or unstable core so what's going to happen is let's do it even faster so target velocity force will do even more so let's do a little, a little heavier here and even faster here and force has to be quite high so let's do this it should spin it should spin faster yes so now when we give it a little push and let's do it the other way around seems like the other way around so when the weight is controlled to the front but uncontrolled to the back so when you kind of um, shift your weight so if your upper body gets up or you know your 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 hips are not controlled properly so that's not so bad let's try even faster know how fast we can go so let's do let's do stupid this is good so you you can see how much movement there is um, those are the times where um, the player has to deal with staying balanced in, instead of dealing with execution so if there are variations of his weight so he has to he has to uh, take care of it so if he can if he has better weight control so his his core and his hips and um so ankles go with hips but you know if there is less variation then there's going to be more more place more room for for playing the game so and that's happening so this is only in one axis too it's only left you know forward and back so i think we can go quite high let's do this i don't know if it's gonna go that high Maybe we're not going to see it. So, yeah, you, you see the point. So let's give it a little push. <laughs> so maybe not that high, but any combinations is, is, uh, could make it work or not work. So 750. And let's do even more force. It's not gonna matter at that point. So this is exaggerated, but it, it still gives it gives a good idea of, of what's happening. You can see right there that you know the player 
who becomes unstable because of anything, fuck position, um, the effect is not going to go away until he takes care of it. So this is something that uh, is really important to, to understand and to kind of get a better grasp on. So here, the other rotation, the other way around. So this is crazy stupid, but yeah, this is extreme, but it's, it's, it does, it does, um, it does illustrate the point. Good. So that's it for this video. Um, I've, uh, I've done one profile. It's imported in unity, which is, which is fun. Uh, I've done a, a continuous rotation of one segment with different weights. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do probably is, is, um, do spring force movement, which is, um, when you push with your, your foot or your leg, there is a limit to the range of motion that you have a limit to the force and you have, uh, acceleration and deceleration to see if there are things that pop up and, and, uh, really are of interest. So yeah, that's it for uh, this video. Have fun and uh, see you next time.